Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25 and I'm sort of glad that I kept it in 0.25 at this point because it looks like we're not going to be staying in beta for very long and by version 1.0 everything is going to change so probably good that I didn't upgrade to 0.9 um, of course I don't have the same editing tools that they have in 0.9 so that's a little bit of a bummer but otherwise since everything's going to change anyway in the full release of the program uh, with aerodynamics being different and then we have the resource system and then everything else so um, yeah, I'll just stick to 0.25 and I'll be quite happy with that uh, especially since there's a stable install but in the previous episode I brought the reactor down to the base hooked it up and we still have the aeroponics module in orbit around the moon but I don't want to do this the exact same thing I did in the previous episode in this episode so I'm gonna try something completely different and to that end, I want to unlock stuff. I especially want to unlock the rapier engines, which, well, that, that would be something very different, wouldn't it, if I... I, I think it's about time I uh, got uh, aircraft involved in all of this, especially since we're starting to work on reusable systems a, a bit more. Um, taking a look at some of the other stuff before I commit that science to that. I mean, there's, there's some interesting solar panelry there. Otherwise, I don't see anything too pressing. What? 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 Uh, well, I mean, there's the. I've been wanting the radio winches actually, um, and then the, the nuclear stuff, I suppose. Well, fusion drive. You know, I could wait for that. Uh, I could definitely wait for some of this. Is well, I mean, of course, uh, it, the propellant is carborundum, so even though it's got this uh, crazy ISP, it's not like we're we're gonna hit upon that very quickly. Though I guess we could have these carborundum tanks samples. Well, that's just a sample. Costs a lot, so I guess it's, I guess it's balanced. It's fine, but I don't need to rush into that. What I do want to do is get the rapier engines so we can do some. What? Well, what's with these? Oh, I guess, I guess there is a limit to our fairing bases right now. I haven't really been needing anything too large. Like, well, some of the craft has, I've gotten a little bit wonky on the fairings, but, all right. Let's unlock this. Okay, so we've got interesting engines. One other thing I wanted to do, somebody asked if I could go through the craft I have involved right now. So let's just quickly update on everything that we've got going on. So here we are, we don't have flags or debris showing. So Rover Alpha was the first rover that we sent over to the emergency hab. And it's not particularly useful right now. It uh, lost its life support uh, when tumbling into the crater that the emergency hab is situated in. You can see our base, our main base is here, and our emergency habitat is here. And so, and the emergency habitat is inside a crater. Okay, the moon scanner is in polar orbit around the moon, and it is uh, available for scanning for um, carbonite resources and other things. It's got a load of instruments attached and uh, well we could jump to it but I don't think it's necessary. You get the idea. It's a satellite that's scanning for resources. Uh, Carbonite Miner Launcher Probe, that's just uh, uh, a spent stage. Uh, the Emergency Habitat itself, which we got upright finally. Mooner Station 1, which we haven't had too much use for but there's uh, Kerbal on board and we could use it for refueling the uh, space plane if we so chose and I should probably outfit it for that if we get to that point uh, this is um, this is a spent stage uh, and yeah we'll need to recover those then there are the three uh, things that were originally meant to be sky cranes bringing modules down to the surface the orange ended up uh, landing at the... it really is landed. Um, it just needs to be refueled. It can't get back up into space. We ended up running out of fuel. The Super Orange is still in orbit, but we don't use it anymore because it keeps spinning. Uh, it could be used. I mean, uh, we, I had used it before and it's still serviceable. But the main thing that is currently in... where is the... oh right, uh, the pumpkin is currently attached to the aeroponics module. Okay, so that takes care of those. That is a spent stage. This is a spent stage. Well, this is a splashed down. Oh, this splashed down on Kerbin. All right. 
Yeah, so that's just something that I think we could recover that, but uh, let's hold off. Well, okay, let's recover it. Yeah. You have to be careful about recovering these things, though. Okay, yeah, just a little bit of stuff. Alright, so we cleaned that up. Okay, so this is the tanker that was uh, sent over. It, uh, it isn't too... well, it's interesting. Let's, let's actually take a look at it, just to remind ourselves. So yeah, here's the tanker truck. And it's got a lot of features actually. First of all, it's got lots of life support. It's got uh, waste containers. Unfortunately, no waste converters, I don't think. Carbonite tanks, so it can uh, store carbonite. It can't convert carbonite, but it can store it. And it's got a uh, RCS tank. It's even got a thermometer. Lock temperature. Oh, go figure. Um, I believe it's got antenna, right? Yeah, how's its electric charge? Okay, well, let's get some science, whatever. Okay, so it's got a container that has uh, some pipe endpoints and radio connector ports. So that's that. It's got, of course, the docking port needed to be lifted by the sky crane, the orange or the pumpkin. It's got a vertical stack winch in the tail, solar panels for recharging, and lots of batteries. That's basically the sum of it. This is the, well, I guess it is, will need to be uprighted, but this is the orange. This is the flag, the emergency hab, and the rover alpha there. So then we get to the assets that are more, more recent. The helmet miner, which is at the base right now, which is our current uh, format carbonite miner, though we haven't really used it to ferry carbonite from the surface to the to the station in orbit around the moon, but that's its intention. Uh, probably I could build a better miner, and of course as we open new technologies I can improve upon it. It's a cute little design though. The Mu, Fu Mu Fuel Depot is an emergency fuel depot in orbit around Kerbin that's only meant for emergency refueling if necessary. Uh, possibly for our space plane we'll need to dock with it. Um, the Super Orange I mentioned. Uh, test 2 uh, just a little uh, science test uh, and um, the we have a station around Kerbin so that's that let's take a quick peek at it okay so this is our Kerbin orbit station it also has refueling capabilities this is a fuel tank that is mostly empty actually the thing about this is that pretty much all of it was launched uh, th this was just the launch so we actually got the entire launch into orbit except for I think some SRBs but not too many SRBs so the engine the launch engine is still attached and this is a mostly empty fuel tank but it can be refueled and we've got this spinning section we've got we've got solar panels uh, facing the wrong way I think uh, but it's it's totally recharged so it's not a big deal we could I guess we could spinning around now there we go okay so there's been some precession or something uh, lots of life support you can see no machinery and that's something that I want to do uh, I'm gonna be trying to build a space plane but what I want really is something to transfer machinery from place to place because we need machinery at the aeroponics lab I didn't include machinery there but we need it in order for that to run. We need 350 units of it. So that's something. And we probably need some here too. So you can see the composter here for the Kerbitat is mis missing machinery. And we also need some biomass. So we need something to deliver these things to these locations. And I think a space plane is the thing to achieve that. So we've got that. That's my goal. But uh, I don't know. I haven't designed it yet. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to design a good one. And we'll have to test it and it'll have to be able to transfer the stuff efficiently. It's tough to say. So I'll have to take a look. Of course we've got the rapier engines so it's not like there's too much of an excuse here but there is also Fermi Aerospace which likes to rip things apart. Okay but anyway that's our Kerbin Orbit Station. After that we have the Light Tower, the the Kerbitat which is the... I guess that's the base right? Well I don't know. We've got the power plant here. Kerbitat. 
Wait, is that the... No, the emergency habitat's there. Crevitat should be connected, right? Hold on, let me take, take a look at what it means by Crevitat here. Okay, yeah, so the Crevitat's here, and uh, that's, that's the reactor, all right. Helmet miner. You can see why it's the helmet miner. Of course, I deliberately misspelled helmet. Okay, so, I don't know, we've got the Kerbitat and the power plant landed at the moon, and I don't know why they're separate. It's... I think maybe this is actually the... What did I call the replace? Oh, the Moon Master. Yeah, I think this is actually the Moon Master. That's what it is. The Moon Master is the replacement for the Gold Bug, which is... Uh, so, it's, it's the one that is the current major rover on the moon. Um, supply lander was just a little bit uh, of uh, life support supplies and otherwise the tug was supposed to tug the modules around but it's not very good at it and the aeroponics module that we are waiting to bring down now the key thing is the aeroponics module if we take a look at it okay the aeroponics module currently lacks machinery and it requires the machinery and it just requires 350 I believe and that does not get consumed it just needs it there and so we need to deliver some machinery to the aeroponics module uh, not before bringing it down of course uh, it's not necessary to dock up with it up here though we could do that it's got a docking port free here uh, and we could transfer the machinery but but yeah uh, it needs machinery and in fact all of our base modules right now We've got the colony control center, the Kerbitat, and the power plant. All of them need something that we haven't really delivered to them. And so, gotta consider that so that we can actually make those modules functional. Right now, they're not doing anything. They're just places for the Kerbals to live, which is plenty, of course. But uh, we would like them to actually be productive. And so, I need to bring some more equipment down. Probably spare parts and stuff like that, though we've got some spare parts here, too. Um, yeah, and so I'll take a look at uh, building a space plane, though uh, it's possible that I might have to settle for a rocket for this time. We'll, I'll try to come up with a space plane that I'm confident in, so let me go ahead and do that. But if I'm not confident in the design, I'm not going to risk uh, our funds or a Kerbal trying to uh, test it out before I'm really sure it's going to work. Alright, so it's either going to be a space plane or a rocket bringing supplies up. And we'll do that this time and then we'll wait till next time to bring the aeroponics module down. Okay, so I don't think that the answer is going to be a plane, unfortunately. Um, I've designed a plane, as you can see. It's a, it's a very beautiful plane and it's got all sorts of nifty features, but I'm not sure it's going to work out. Actually, I'm sure it's not going to work out. Uh, first of all, I wanted to install procedural wings in, and I tried to, but when I uh, brought one of the wing parts over and tried to attach it to the to the aircraft, it didn't work. It uh, it did not like that. It null refed on me. It didn't attach anything to the aircraft, and it froze the game and crashed. So that's not good. And so I had to dump procedural wings, which was contrary to the way I wanted to design this in the first place. You'll remember that we lost Jeb Kerman in a plane with these stupid, uh, well, not stupid, they're very nice, but uh, it, let's say far inadequate uh, wings, uh, these uh, Space Beam Plus wings, which uh, unfortunately did not do very well uh, with uh, far. And... Uh, looking at them now, I've, I've designed the wing obviously, um, looking at the situation, I see red here, which is uh, this is about the speeds we'll, we'll be taking off at. Uh, maybe we'd be taking off a little bit faster, but let's, let's go with this for a sec here. Um, change in roll right angular acceleration. Now, if you remember what happened to Jeb, that's pretty much what happened. What, what, we, hap what, what we had was an out of control side slip. And uh, so th what this is telling me is that if I have some side slip, which means I'm deviating away from my prograde vector to the right or left, if you will, uh, I'm going to end up uh, rolling uncontrollably. And yeah, that's what happened with Jeb. And that's what looks like will happen here. By the way, uh, uh, these upturned wing tips are supposed to help. 
uh, it's much worse without them. So, um, I've tried to mitigate the situation, but it seems like my normal design thing with uh, my, uh, my flamboyance, if you will, uh, upturned wings, uh, low-mounted wings with a uh, high dihedral, uh, might not be such a great idea as far as the aerodynamics here are concerned. Now, going a little bit faster, it's not too bad, but, but that's sort of what I had with Jeb too. So, I mean, I didn't fly with Jeb having a huge amount of problems here, right? So, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm also nervous by the fact that uh, the procedural wings didn't work out. Uh, but what really, really gets me nervous right now is the fact that the wings are so darn heavy. Um, you see here, I mean, we've got this delta wing point one, right? Uh, well, let's let's see. Um, th this little part is a good one. Uh, this little wing strake. Okay, this wing strake is supposed to be point oh two five. Now take a look at my tonnage here. I'm at forty six point nine tons. Let me take off these. Ah, forty six point eight. Well, that's not too bad. Maybe that's just a rounding error. No, wait. Well, uh, maybe let, let's call it a rounding error. All right, uh, let me take off a larger piece, this piece, uh, swept wing type A. And if we find swept wing type A, okay, 0 0.05 tons. So at 47, ah, 1.3 tons. There's two of them, obviously, but that means 0.65 tons a piece? How does that work out? The point is that the wing is much more massive than I expect it to be, and I don't know why. So this is not good. I do not like not knowing why it's so heavy. And of course it being heavy means I need more engine power. Now this engine power is enough to get it up, but it's bad. Now that's a shame because it's pretty good design otherwise. I've got the little drop tanks for the liquid fuel that we need for jet mode. I've got these, uh, it's supposed to land directly on the moon. And so these little uh, Rock Max 48 ss they're not enough to have it take off vertically from Earth, but they're meant to have it land on the moon. So that was a nifty idea I had. And also, uh, we are carrying the, what, what's this called, radial supply tank with the machinery that we need. So that's in there. Uh, just enough space. It's, I've added some life support tanks for the Kerbal. So put that on the side, and we've got these little pipe endpoints so that we can transfer the resources. So it was a full design, but no matter where I put my control surfaces, even with these little nifty little wingtip uh, pieces, I wasn't getting the happy sense that far was not going to kill me. So, and with the loss of Jeb, I have to keep that in mind. I'm not carrying any parachutes here. Uh, the parachutes would be an extra mass that I really can't afford. And the problem, one thing is, uh, if I was using the the sort of default pods, which are like these, I would be able to decouple the front portion and use parachute just on the front portion to save the Kerbal. But as long as I'm using these Mark II parts, there is no decoupler with this size. So that's another thing. I could try and uh, I could make it ugly. Uh, but I don't want to. But this is a design that exists and uh, maybe instead of killing a Kerbal, I'll test it off to the side if you don't mind. Uh, maybe that would be a good idea. It's just not worth another Kerbal death to try this out. So, I am going to design something in the VAB and I'll be back with you to see what I can do. I, th I have a good idea uh, and we're going to try and transfer resources yeah, using a uh, rocket this time. But I will go with a reusable thing. Uh, the whole point of using the plane was to get uh, reusability going full steam ahead and I think I'll try for a fully reusable rocket. Ah, there's one more thing I forgot to mention in the space plane hangar and that's that I imported in the Derrick shuttle which is a space plane I used in my and continue to use in my .25 stock series and I could import it now because I have the rapier unlocked, but uh, I got a nasty surprise related to the heaviness of the wing pieces. The, the um, Derek is supposed to have a maximum mass of about 47 tons, and its engines really can't cope with more than that. 
but unfortunately here we have it at 60 tons because of the heavier wing pieces and it's literally covered in wing pieces it's got all these it's got that and uh, it probably wouldn't have worked with far anyway because of the layered wings here far doesn't like it when you layer wings and it's got triple layers here uh, so that it could get the lift in stock but uh, the mass is just gonna kill it uh, really would like no less than 0.85 surface thrust to weight ratio when uh, flying aircraft so so yeah it's uh, it's a no-go unfortunately and I don't know if it's a bug or whether it's intentional the wing pieces are so much heavier but it's true of this aircraft as well and I just straight imported it it's a stock fully stock aircraft just stock pieces and it has this problem so so I don't know anyway uh, back to the VAB and I'll get working on that rocket okay that's a little strange I accidentally pressed launch uh, for the Derek shuttle uh, instead of exit uh, at the corner of the SPH and I just recovered it and I swear my funds went up uh, whatever I thought I was at uh, 3.6 million or so and now I'm at 3.7 I don't know Things are going weird. Anyway, let's continue. Okay, I've come up with another crazy idea for a reusable rocket system, and uh, this is the egg plus feather system. Uh, first, the egg, uh, not quite egg shaped actually. Uh, it's got an LV909 here, and the goal of this is to lift this. This is a storage tank with uh, an equipment container. It doesn't carry as much mas machinery as we need actually, it's a little bit short. Uh, and the reason for that is if I scale this up to 2.5 meters it's very cost inefficient and also it's uh, heavier and the machinery is actually 1200 when we only need 350 so we'll just have to do multiple launches of machinery and that'll allow us to do uh, and I'm not carrying any spare parts I, I don't know uh, spare parts yeah I mean it makes a huge difference you can see the mass right now is 6.3 up there uh, the spare parts will be three more tons and I'll throw everything off but uh, the goal of this is that this is all retrievable you can see parachutes on it uh, now whether it'll actually survive re-entry I don't know we'll have to be a little bit careful it's got loads and loads of Delta V um, though not as much as I need if I put the spare parts in um, yeah, so loads and loads of Delta V. It's the goal of this is to go over to the moon, land on the moon, deliver the supplies, get back into orbit around the moon, and then return to Kerbin. All of it. So all the things. Yes, it uh, it handles that all on its own, and that is the goal of it. So yep, I could have sworn anyway before I had. Uh, up the spare parts. I could have sworn I had more Delta V in this. Well, I'm really bad with looking at numbers today. Okay, anyway, so there we go. We've got all sorts of little radio connector ports and pipe end ports just in case. Uh, those those aren't too bad. And since we're recovering everything, it's okay. Uh, before I go to there though, uh, this is now all part of the launcher. So this is the controller for the launcher with its battery packs. Uh, it's got eight parachutes here. This is the reserve tank which I need to shut off. Um, anyway, that reserve tank is going to be for deorbiting this thing and uh, the launcher is going to get all the way to orbit and try to deorbit and come back. So it's gonna be like that. Um, let's get this right. Okay, and the launcher barely has enough uh, thrust weight ratio to get off, but here's the trick. Aha! We've been we're using wing pieces in order to extend everything. We've got big landing legs all the way out, and the question is whether this will hold. I don't know if these wing pieces are particularly good, and you know what? Uh, just in case, I am going to add some struts because that seems like a reasonable thing to do with these wing pieces. So I'm gonna add struts here and on the opposite side as well, just to make sure it'll bear the weight properly. Okay, but then there's also deadly re-entry to worry about and ferrum aerospace where that ju the ferrum aerospace will just rip these off, I don't know. But it's an interesting thing to try, isn't it? And it's a pretty uh, low rocket as you can see. It's uh, stout and not very tall. 
so we've got that going for us. It's pretty wide base to uh, land with. Now it could end up in the ocean, in which case that's sort of different. Uh, obviously this is more meant to land on land, but we are retrieving it from orbit. So as long as we can uh, retro burn it properly, we should be able to hit land. So that's what I'm counting on. Obviously I call this the feather because I had already called the the upper portion the egg based on its shape. And so we are going with that sort of naming in this case. Whimsical indeed. But yeah, let's uh, go with this, try it out. You'll note that the egg doesn't have much delta V, uh, not delta V, a thrust to weight ratio right now. But it, it has to make its uh, lunar transfer. And by that time, its uh, thrust weight ratio will go up, certainly enough to tackle the moon. The moon only needs uh, a sixth of Kerbin, so it's all good. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so here you go. Um, very stout, certainly a wide base for a rocket like this. So yeah, uh, a little bit odd looking, but hey, uh, it could work. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, if there's something wrong with it, we're about to find out. All right, the good thing about it is, is that it is relatively cheap. It uh, is meant to take three tons to the moon, uh, three tons shaped in a 1.25 meter diameter. So that's the, that's the form factor of it. All right, so I think all the best is spoken for. Let's go. This is, of course, a mainsail, I forgot to mention. We are using the mainsail to launch this, instead of my normal multi-engine configuration. Could go back to the multi-engine configuration, but I think it might be easier to retrieve this with just one engine at the bottom. Oh, it's looking pretty stable so far. How do we get to 55? Okay, well, let's go to 55. It's uh, quite likely that the large wing pieces are forcing it towards the prograde vector, which is fine, I guess. Okay, pretty good. We'll go for a hundred kilometers by a hundred kilometers. I think we can drop fairings. Oh, 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 okay. Forgot about that. The fairings need to. Hmm. <laughs> So we lost one lander leg, and we're past uh, we're past the uh, altitude I was aiming for. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, that is a complication, isn't it? Okay, well, either increase ejection force, make sure that the. I don't know. I guess we could make sure that the fairings are sort of oriented in between the gap between the fins. Though there's no guarantee that that would work. Well, there was bound to be something wrong with this. Hopefully that was the only thing. I guess we'll go for 120 kilometers instead of 100 then, since we're already up here. Alright, good enough. Okay, let's go to SAS and let the payload fly. Okay, payload is away. It's got solar panels. I'm gonna extend those hopefully. Hopefully. Solar panels. I thought I had action group to use solar panels. Why can I not control you? Not enough electric charge. Not enough electric charge? Ah, uh, this thing does not. <laughs> it has a probe core in it, but no electric charge. I see. 
Okay, well, this thing is a dud. Well, at least it has a docking port, though we can't open it. <laughs> okay, so the egg is a dud. We need to uh, get a new sort of egg. But let's test uh, the launch vehicle first. And then we'll launch another egg with some <laughs> electric power, for heaven's sakes. Okay, all right then. Be that way. All right. Okay, not that this is in the best shape either, but at least it's got a chance. All right, let's see how we're going to bring this down. Okie dokie. We are now set for our return. Lots of clouds. Now we've got those big wing pieces. I'm hoping that all they're going to do is keep me oriented. <laughs> They've got no control surfaces on them, which might have been a mistake. We shall see. Looks like we're going to be going long, so I probably should retrofire. Uh, let me just wait until we hit the continent and I want to continue seeing what sort of temperatures we get up to. How about the little struts and the... Oh, those landing struts are really going. Well, the heating seems pretty mild. I'm running out of juice here. No, it's going up there, the heating. Just 75 meters per second left vacuum. Oh, oh, we're deviating. Maybe aerodynamic stress will far rip the fins off or just rotate us. Well, we got rotation, that's for sure. Got a lot of deviation. Wow. There's some serious turbulence we've got here. Okay, well, we're through it, looks like. At least through the... Oh! Okay, well that was unexpected. <laughs> Just a probe core left. Any other big parts? Well, wings. Okay, well this uh, the parachute uh, complex. I don't know why ship manifest is interested. Uh, this is all gonna die. I can't deploy the chutes. So, oh, I can deploy the chutes. How do I? How can I deploy the chutes? wonder how I... There's no probe core here. This... The advanced SAS unit shouldn't have a probe core. That was weird. Okay. Okay, this didn't work. Um, it got through deadly re-entry. It just uh, exploded afterwards. I guess FAR didn't like it. I think we can launch the egg on uh, one of our tried and tested sort of vehicles instead of the feather. I think that's probably the way to go. But I'll have to get some electric charge on the egg so it can do its thing. Alright, well this is just going to die. Well, th no, this isn't going to die. I don't know why this isn't going to die, but it isn't. I don't know why it's oriented hor uh, in this angle too. Why are you at this angle? Strange. The parachutes on the other side should definitely pull you up. Well, now they do. So, whatever this is, we're going to get it back. But we're not getting back most of our stuff. Okay, recover that. You know what? Maybe if I just put control surfaces on. I mean, would would it be better if I just put control surfaces on? Do you think? Could be better, could be worse. I guess there's nothing to do but to try it, huh? 
Ah, jeez, this is a horrible way to get control surfaces on, though. Nope, I'm just gonna have the wingtip ones. Let's just go with that. Let's hope that might be enough to keep things oriented properly. And now, electric charge. Very important. Should never forget that. I don't know if I should put them on the egg itself, but that's the way it goes, because I want to be able to put any payload on top of it. So yeah. Let's hope that will satisfy everything. Alright, let's try this again. Uh, though, I don't know how... Just those little uh, control surfaces seem to have brought our our delta V as well as our thrust weight ratio down. They're, they're pretty heavy things now, I guess. Okay, it's funny that I decided to put wings on this after finding out that the wing pieces are actually a lot heavier than they're supposed to be, but... Alright, here we go. Okay, so just in case you've forgotten amidst all the chaos, the goal here is actually to deliver machinery to our lunar base. And SAS is on, throttle is up, and launch. And I don't need FMRS doing its thing. Oh, I forgot to... Okay, uh... Hmm... You know what? Uh, we'll jettison the fairings... Uh... Yeah, we'll jettison the fairings later. Uh, let's see, how are they oriented? Yeah, th this one will definitely go this way. Yeah, I should have reoriented everything. But shoulda is, uh, is in the past. Hmm, not loving the sense of control here. Very wobbly suddenly. Wasn't very wobbly without the controls, but... Now it's wobbly. Smart ASS, I tell you. Okay, you know what? Smart ASS, go off. I'll, I'll just take care of this manually. Doesn't give me good feelings about how we're going to be on the re-entry, though. Oh, we can dump uh, fairings now, surely. There we go. No problem hitting the fin like that. Okay, we are in orbit. Engines off. Let's. You're gonna have electric charge this time, right? Right? Right. Okay, you have electric charge. Let's open the solar panels. Okay, brief freeze there, but alright, solar panels are open. And active. Alright. So it looks like the egg is good to go. It's got 3,400 delta V. Hopefully enough to get all the way there and all the way back. Of course, it'll be dropping off uh, its supplies there, so it'll be a little bit lighter after all that. We have a lot less delta V reading here, but we've still got the, the tank up there. So we can transfer that in. Now we were a little bit going too far there last time. Going a little bit too far there last time. Uh, so let's try 26 kilometers. Maybe I, I think I probably got the number wrong, honestly. I don't think it was supposed to be 28 kilometers at all. Okay. And again, this also means that the heating will be somewhat more intense and maybe the spinning and all the craziness will be too. And we've got less fuel to deal with it this time by about a hundred meters per second. Again, the only actual change being the control surfaces, unless my... I think my launch was better than last time, actually. So... Oh, one thing that could have caused the spinning is the fact that we had lost the landing gear on one side, huh? Yeah. I mean, the landing gear is actually pretty heavy. And especially since it's been scaled up. 
So yeah, that, that would have produced quite a bit of spinning. No wonders. Maybe it'll be more stable this time just because we've got the landing gear all on. If you're wondering whether eight uh, these are these shoots are the large size. I've uh, scaled them up, so I am also wondering whether just eight of them will be enough to carry the 29 ton load here. Though we'll be dumping some of that by way of doing a burn. We'll be we can dump up to four tons. We might be going a little bit long, but not very far long. And we're overshooting. I think the wings are producing some lift that I have not properly accounted for. Oh, we're deviating. We're deviating again. I'd like to produce some some stabilizing spin if possible. Let me take Smart ASS off and SAS on. Okay, not a good idea. Kill rotation, please. Okay, well we seem to be through. And I'm just waiting for a chance to deploy parachutes. Well if it's spinning all over the place then we're a little bit worried, but here we go. Ow. Okay, well parachutes deployed. We're obviously gonna be hitting water here, not the best situation. This thing is spinning all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna take Smart ASS off. Let's just have the parachutes do their thing, maybe. <sighs> just flopping all over the place. It's gonna have quite a tug once the parachutes open fully. Okay, they've opened fully. They're taking a little bit of time to get it slowed down. Nine. Okay, let's say I lower landing gear. But it took a long time to get it slowed down, that's annoying. Alright, and then I can run the engines for a little bit. Okay, will it flop? I don't think it's gonna flop. Well, that's a good thing. I think we can recover this. So, much to my own surprise, uh, it's recoverable in water too. So uh, we, we got 97.2% uh, of our funds back, not too far from the KSC. And if it works on water, probably works on land, I guess. I mean, uh, it's certainly it's built for land. It didn't have any floats or anything. Who needs floats? Uh, could use a few more parachutes perhaps, but as long as we've got some fuel left over, it should be all right. Okay, somewhat as expected, I don't have much time left. Uh, it took a long time to build these things after all. And so I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll take care of uh, transferring it over to the moon. And in the next episode, we'll find out whether we really have a reusable system here. I mean, we've got half of a reusable system, potentially. I, I think the feather uh, sort of got whacked around by the atmosphere, a lot like a feather, actually. Um, but that wasn't by design, and I, I'm not entirely sure I'm comfortable with all that spinning that it was doing. Uh, at least it survived, but the heating was also pretty intense. And it, it'd be pre pretty easy to see where that could go wrong if uh, the temperatures got, got any higher than that. So, provisionally we've got half of a reusable system, and in the next episode we are going to find out whether we have the other half as well. All right, well, I'll get this on its way to the moon, and with it 
doing its burn. I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.